How's it going folks? Uh, just a little bit of an update on um, yeah how things are going with the dismantling of the existing aquaponic system. I was hoping to actually have this all um, pulled down by today but yeah just small jobs kept cropping up that I had to look after. I'll bring you around here to give you a bit of a look at where we are up to. We've um, taken out the other uh, the satellite bed uh, it got cleaned out the other day. It was actually a bit of a hybrid bed. I had uh, about half of it was filled with what we call blue metal. Someone asked the other day what the blue metal is. A blue metal is actually a um, basalt rock. It's used for road base here. So I had that on the bottom uh, just to help make filling the bed a little bit cheaper. And then I had a layer of clay on top. Now the real pain in the butt was trying to clean the clay out away from the blue metal because that clay will probably be on sold to other people as I won't need as much anymore. And the blue metal I actually used to fill a big hole that was left by the uh, builders at the front of our driveway. So, um, yeah, that one's out now. Uh, over the top of the sump tank, of course, that bed's gone. It went the other week. A uh, couple of firetail gudgeons in there. That's why I still have the water uh, running through the biofilter. But this bed here is offline. And as you saw at the start, I've already um, started to clean this out. Now, this bed here is just one mass of roots as you can see just giving you a bit of a closer look at these roots you can actually see where i've cut along there with my garden knife uh, taken out a wedge of um, uh, clay that's encrusted in roots and um, cleaned that out and then yeah um, putting the clay over to one side uh, just to dry out so i can store it away so this is going to take a lot longer than i thought um, this little section here that i've done just along the front um, it took me around about two to three hours just to do that uh, it's pretty slow going when you're trying to get all the clay out so i figure it's 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 a pretty expensive product and i might as well save as much as i can um, to one sell to other people uh, the plan is either to go with rafts or maybe a, a sand um, system that i'll tell you about later when we build our final um, system here not the makeshift one in between though Oh, I took this bed out as well, it was just getting in the way. I want to be able to um, get over to that corner so I can clean that stuff out. And as I mentioned, I am drying out the clay here. Uh, what I've done is just got an old grow bed. I just put some planks on the side and some shade cloth in there. And that's allowing any of the water to drain out. And the, this is um, from the first bed I did. And um, yeah, uh, it was almost dry. And then we've had some rain over the last couple of days. So it's a little bit moist down in there. But as you can see, I've gotten the majority of the, um, uh, the, the little fine roots and bits of solids out of here. And um, over in this one here, this one started off, oh there's some, uh, blue metal bed. So there's some very small bits of blue metal I may have missed in here, but the rest is just um, the clay media. Just a bit of a um, tip when it comes to cleaning roots out of clay for any of you guys who want to salvage as much as you can and clean it up. Um, I've been using this little net, cup, um, net pot here. Uh, it's got loads of holes in the sides of it and I've also been using a um, tank strainer. This is a uh, rainwater tank strainer, just stops any leaves and large bit, bits of debris getting into your rainwater tank. And generally under that you have a fly screen to keep the mozzies out. Um, but yeah, I've just been using this, a um, bit hard to do with one hand, but I filmed a little bit earlier. So what I do is I just grab a small amount of clay in the net pot, give it a bit of a swirl around and empty out the clean clay. And what happens is a lot of the organic matter um, just ends up sticking to the side of the net pot. And then I just give it a bit of a tap out in a container here. I'm losing the odd small clay ball that gets stuck up in with the roots, but I'm not too concerned about that. So the bed over the sump tank um, only took me just over a day to do that one because I started late in the afternoon. Uh, it took me a couple of days to do the um, satellite bed with the uh, blue metal and the clay just because I wanted to clean as much of um, this stuff out as I could. Obviously not all of it. Um, and this one here I started yesterday afternoon, did a little bit this morning. And yeah, hopefully I'll um, knock it off this afternoon after I finish filming here because I'm heading um, to a mate's parents farm, hobby farm. Uh, for a day of bow shooting so yeah just trying to get my eye back in with the compound uh, the plants that were in here by the way I haven't salvaged all or saved all the plants um, just just a few of each like you can see the um, garlic chives there a couple of clumps of them uh, I've got a large pouch with the Okinawan spinach and then I've got a um, pot just behind it and there's a hoe and knock and around the side there just down there we have 
a mushroom herb. And I also have um, other bits and pieces. I've got some Brazilian spinach uh, tucked in behind that lemongrass over there and I've got bits and pieces up in water. I've got some brahmi as well. But yeah, hopefully these guys will take off. I'm not too overly concerned if they don't because I do have backup plants. Oh, the garlic chives, they're the only ones I don't, but I'm fairly sure they won't die off. And I've just sat, um, I'll set up a little bit of a shade here just because it gets rather hot here in the middle of the day. Just to show you what I'm doing with all the greens from the system, they're just going under the um, lime tree at the moment, helping to feed up the soil there. I'll just give you a bit of a look at this lime. This is our Tahitian, and I mean, that is one impressive branch of fruit right there. She's actually doing really, really well. We have loads of fruit on her of all sizes. You can probably make out a larger one over the back there. We have one there that's just discoloring now or changing color, so um, that'll be ready to come off in the next day or so. So she's doing really, really well. Really happy with the way uh, this next lot of fruit are coming on, just to give you some idea. There's even more there. There's a load in there. There's a nice little hand of three, so yeah, uh, definitely one tree we will be keeping uh, through the redesign. Might give her a bit of a cutback, but um, yeah, she could do with a bit of a haircut. And just to give you a bit of a look at our gorgeous mango, that some people are very upset to hear that we will be cutting back a bit. <laughs> she does have a load of fruit on at the moment. Uh, there's probably about four or five there I'm going to pick today. Uh, there's that one there. And there's some more just up there that I will be picking and putting in a mango tray. Uh, we are not going to be um, heavily harvesting her this season, mainly because, as you can see from that fruit there, the wildlife are having a bit of a feed on her. And uh, Bianca and I had a bit of a chat and, you know, just due to the drought and the amount of stress the uh, fruit bat population is under at the moment, as well as the possums themselves, uh, we figured we might let these guys just stay on the tree and feed the wildlife and we'll take a dozen or two off and that's about it. Well, just to give you a look, there's a nice one just here I might just pick now. Oh look, just in time too, there's a blooming Queensland fruit fly on it. So there we go. Uh, and she stung it too, right there you can see the sting. But yeah she's a li little bit soft, that'll be right before that maggot forms. I like to snap them a little bit higher up because they can bleed a little bit of sap and it discolors the fruit. This one's not going to snap. Oh, no. So there we go. I stuffed that one up, but that's what I mean. They, um, a, a bit of sap runs down. It discolors the fruit. So I might um, grab the secateurs and grab, um, yeah, grab a tray or two. And as you can see, they're the ones that the bats and the possums have knocked off onto the ground already. There's also one over there uh, in the pouch. So I'll come back and get them. Oh, while we're here, bit of a look at the coffee tree. Loads of berries again, and no, I haven't posted the coffee processing clip. I still haven't gotten around to do that because it sort of all happened as we were moving back into the house here. So we'll get to it. Sorry, folks, I just realized I got a bit carried away. I didn't film um, the lopping off of the mangoes, but there we go. We have 24 mangoes. Some of them um, have only just started to get a bit of a blush to them like that one there and this one here really isn't that oh, a little bit of a blush I prefer them to get a lot more before I harvest them mainly because you know the riper they are before you harvest them on the tree the, the sweeter they are I think I did take a couple here with some um, yellow on them so they've started to ripen up but as you can see there's little black dots so I dare say we might have a few um, fruit fly strike on some of them and um, also too some of these larger ones not that one, there was one in here I did see a couple of little dots on. Um, they're, they're green, but they're starting to get a little bit soft. It was one of the larger ones in this box, I thought. Um, but yeah, so I am wary that there may be some uh, Queensland fruit flies striking some of them. I forgot to mention, these guys here are a Bowen or a Kensington Pride, I think is another name they go by. Um, so yeah, they're a very nice sweet mango when they're ripe, but they're also suitable to use when they're green. And to pick them, I use my old Cyclone Lopper with a pot zip tied on the side. The reason I've zip tied it is so I can spin it around and maneuver it to where the fruit's gonna drop, depending on where I have to cut the, um, the branch above the mango. One of our Farm Your Own Yard supporters, Kate, um, g'day Kate, uh, she shared with us an idea last year using a bottle with a section cut out connected to a pole, just to hook over the top of the fruit and then you pull it down and the fruit drops into the bottle and yeah you don't have to worry about dropping it um, so i posted a clip about that last year if you want to check it out it'll just be up there a uh, little ingenious method of harvesting uh, but yeah i didn't have any bottles around at the moment and this was under the house from a couple of years back so it was just easy enough to use that 
Um, yeah, and I got a bit sidetracked and cleaned out a bit more media too before I realised I hadn't finished the clip. So I've actually um, cut a nice little square into the corner there and I'm thinking I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, I might drain some of the water out so it doesn't go too anaerobic down there and the cardamom still has some oxygen around its roots. So I think I'll have to tackle this when I come back on Sunday or maybe Monday. And just quickly for you folks who do want a more, you know, uh, meatier aquaponics clip, um, I'll pop a link up there and also in the description down below to a playlist that has 27 videos for folks who are starting out at aquaponics. And if you've only just recently subscribed to the channel, you may not have seen them all. So um, yeah, check them out. I'll give you a decent aquaponics fix because yeah, this one wasn't very in depth and didn't explain a lot other than how to clean muck out of clay. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out if you're interested in more aquaponic content. And if you're after a more um, recent aquaponics clip, I posted a uh, Q&A one uh, earlier on in the week, a couple of days back. Uh, just questions folks asked me over on our YouTube story page. So yeah, you can find a link down below and also there'll be one at the end here in a little box. Uh, uh, another heads up, uh, you folks in Australia, I'm offering 20% off all root pouches until further notice. So if you want a bit of a bargain, there will be a um, link at the end as well as down in the description below. And you folks in America, if you want to check out what we've got for sale in our Amazon Influencer store, there'll be a link there as well. You can follow that along. Um, yeah, I do get a couple of bob for everything you buy through there. And I really do appreciate it if you use it. Don't have to though, no pressure. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much all it, other than, yeah, I hope to um, have the aquaponics clip up by next week for you, uh, at least give you a bit of an idea on what I'm doing with the new build, and yeah, I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks very much for coming along, and um, yeah, keeping up to date with what's going on with the updates. I know they're not riveting for some of you folks, but I really do appreciate you turning up and uh, watching the clips, and leaving the comments down below as well. I love answering your questions down there when I get to the time. Uh, big shout out and thanks to the marvelous folks supporting us through the Farm Your Own Yard members page. Uh, links below if you want to suss that out. And also to the YouTube membership platform. Really appreciate the support, folks. And as always, you can check out our super contributors. Their links are down in the description below. It'd be fantastic if you could go down there and show them some love just by clicking on their links and seeing what they're all about. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I've got to edit this and then pack for heading up to the farm tomorrow. So I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming and I'll catch you later. Cheers, folks. Take it easy.